DreamHack San Diego is an annual esports event that attracts gamers, artists from all over the world. I was lucky enough to have my own art booth at the event, but not everyone had the same good experience. So beginning of the event on Thursday, it was a nightmare for some artists and I guess also for me, but lucky enough on that day, I did got there a little bit late, not too late, but a little bit late where we didn't even have tables yet set up. We were the last ones to get our tables set up compared to everybody else. It was weird. <laughs> for example, on Thursday, the mapping was was kind of weird because there's no names no numbers on the map at all we did have a helper there to kind of help us set up and where we we're supposed to be but it turns out an artist was wrong it was in the wrong area they have almost their booth set up kind of like getting things done together of the tables they had already compared to waiting for the table we are going to get for the setup and they had to move their whole setup just go across to be right next to me because the artist that was in that spot made them move. They didn't even want to like compromise, but hey, you can just go there. It's the same thing, corner booth still. It's not really much of a difference. But they were like, nope, I want to be there. So we had to arcly, arcly, had to see her move all her stuff across because uh, she didn't want to budge on that. <laughs> so throughout the video, I'm going to talk about like sort of like my experience and also artist experience at DreamHack because I they told me a lot of like feelings how they feel about the dreamhack artist alley and they were pretty bad another one was an artist that was right in front of me were literally really mad because what they do is they do art that's kind of like sexy but not too sexy they're not explicit like poses or anything like that they do characters from guilty gear strife and they told him that he had to take down half of his prints because they were too sexy and that really got him mad because he paid for the booth too as well Ugh, I would have been pissed too. And the reason why I said like he had to pay is because artists had an option to make a merch idea based on DreamHack. I made one of a sticker. I paid 60 bucks to make 60 stickers or so that you could also sell at the DreamHack. So it was a win-win. And he didn't do that because he didn't have time. So he had to pay for it. I didn't. So I can see why he was mad and why that was kind of weird too because they have tournaments based on Guilty Gear Stripe characters in the gym hack event like what it was weird seeing artists being forced to censor the work at the event that's supposed to celebrate gaming and art that was weird but yeah at the end of the day the artists really got mad they're almost kind of breaking down and almost kind of like tearing up a little bit which i do understand because that's like affecting their income i had to tuck him down i had to like make him feel better like he was gonna do great and he did really great throughout the weekend so shout out to him honestly because it, it was it was that was pretty messed up in my opinion so for me setting up was good i mean like i didn't have to wait too long i got there a little bit late so i got there and i set up my stuff i left to 10 p.m so like i said my experience was, was good it wasn't like bad or anything like that but for the other artists it's a shame they had to like really deal with a lot of stress and changes last minute kind of thing um that's gonna be a very stressful thing especially for an artist that's been doing boots for a while how they have their certain way to do setups and it's pretty shame really so i'm gonna pretty much talk about the whole experience of the event of me at the booth from friday through sunday so my dad one of the things my dad taught me is to always get at work very early and i don't do that often but when i do an event like artist booth i always early no matter what this is one of the things i like one of the reasons why i like doing that is because i love seeing the backstage of it and being in the front row of everything before it gets flooded with people too many lines, stuff like that. It's just really cool scene. I even got to play some games in arcade. I played Mario Kart. Um, I played like more Capcom, Street Fighter 3. It was super fun, especially playing with some people that are already there early. That was really fun. But the weird thing was, like in the artist experience, there was a group chat that everyone was in. I was in it. I didn't really look at it or anything like that. I didn't really care for it, to be honest, uh, because they didn't really tell me anything at all, really. But they told other artists when they weren't there at a certain time, they actually tagged them like, hey, where are you? You need to be here. They had to be there. For every single artist had to be there early, pretty much. For me, it was whatever, it's because I do that anyways. But for some artists, they're like, what? And honestly, I kind of agree with the artists because like that's never really happened in Artist Alley where you had to, you had to be there at a certain time for some reason. So throughout the whole weekend, 
for me selling was really good i did very well i was literally in brick of being broke because i took a lot of risks of making t-shirts get them now right now in the store buy more and maybe start gold pog champ um okay that was kind of cringe but uh and then i also made like a new email pin and stickers and prints and all that whole jazz kind of thing and also paying for hotel which we'll talk about very very soon the nightmare hotel um and then we also i had also thought, like you know like everything else food parking gas all that kind of stuff so i was literally in break of being broke so luckily throughout the whole weekend i made all my money back and more which i'm very grateful for and I gotta be honest, this is one of the reasons why I like doing artist booths and also bringing traditional art into the artist alley because there's not that many artists that bring traditional art at all. I'm one of the few artists that bring paintings and custom artwork within the booths and that makes my art stand out from everybody else, which that's what everybody tells me every single time I do an artist booth because I do, I am pretty much different, I guess, from everybody else doing anime art or you know gaming art stuff like that don't get me wrong i do fan art too as well but i do it in my own way in a weird way with my weird eyebrows or having like all white eyeballs or something like that like my hat <laughs> throughout those event i did sold out like my funko pop custom uh vegeta blue i sold like my spray can of a uh, uh, scream some fan art paintings and also a lot of my stickers people loved my stickers of my characters and my penguin adventures and all that kind of stuff so i was super happy about that and also they, they also bought some prints and everything so i pretty much was selling everything pretty well except for pins i didn't really sell that well on pins but my shirt and everything did pretty well so i'm super happy about that um and yeah i'm just i'm just super happy that i kind of took this direction throughout my art career because it makes things for me to sell a lot easier because the one thing that i swear to i swear I swear like 10 plus people told me your art stands out you're not doing what everybody else is doing. You're not doing anime art and in in what everybody else is doing. Cause when you look at it, literally one person literally told me the artwork looks the same from everybody else at first, because when you look at it first, they look the same. When you look closely, they look different, you know, within style a little bit, but it's not that much like set to like extremely like 360 differences. But for me, just because I put white eyebrows and use my, different kind of lines it makes it stand out i have no idea that's what like that's what he told me um and that makes me feel good because uh it is an oversaturated market in my personal opinion with anime art and also using a lot of fan art and anime characters there's not more people trying being original like putting out original characters which hey i'm happy about that because the more people that do that the more the le like the more likely that i will stand out so i don't know if that sounds cocky or not but like this is what I got gets in my head now every time I do a booth because every single time this happens. But yeah, throughout the whole weekend, it was pretty good except for my hotel. That was a big, holy hell nightmare. Because I wanted to save uh, some money, like 100 to 200 dollars on a hotel. Because like I said, I was kind of like really broke because I took a lot of risks of like going there. And it was a sketchy, sketchy, sketchy hotel, man. I couldn't take a shower for two days. Well. Part of it is my fault because I didn't buy shampoo, um, body wash, and I didn't have like, you know, that kind of stuff. I did have my brush and, you know, try to keep my hygiene the best I could. They didn't have like freaking hand soap there too, man. It was, it was really bad. Uh, and the reason why I didn't go to the store after the con or before the con is because I woke up early enough to get to the con and then I left when the store closed in order to buy shampoo. And I didn't know there was like a pharmacy or anything like that. I was new to the area where I was at, at the hotel. So I, think I couldn't take a shower for two days because I was dumb and I left late on, on Friday and then also Thursday, the first day. But Saturday is where I find out how much worse the hotel was. On Saturday, when I was ready to take a shower, I went, I, I finished my booth. I went straight to the pharmacy, got all the stuff I needed to take a proper shower. I was, I probably was smelling like Smash Bros or like, lucky I have a booth that's kind of separate from me from people. Like, I try to keep my hygiene as best I can, where I wash my hands, I use the, uh, I use like the soap around like the event and convention to wash myself the best I can, keep myself clean and hygiene the best I could. But oh my God, when I was about to take a shower and I didn't know about this for two days, the shower was broken. It was green on the top thing. It was looked disgusting and the shower knot was completely broken. 
and I had to call security to tell them like to look at it because they probably thought I was lying or something like that. I had to go in front of the front clerk. They kind of, I guess, kind of complain a little bit and to change me a different room. Um, the whole environment was sketchy at the hotel. Like, it was just like for me because it reminds me of like my old like younger self in neighborhood where when you see a group of people like late at night, like two o'clock in the morning, it was really sketchy for me. And that's how it was throughout the whole motel. So I couldn't really walk around too much. Um, it was, it was, it was kind of weird, but you know, that's not beside the point because even though I had a guy mad dogging me a little bit, I don't know, maybe cause I might Pikachu hat on or something, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they, they did move me to a different room, which is way better. Everything was clean. The shower was really good. No stained sheets or anything like that. Uh, the only weird thing was they had a God scratch out on the door for some reason. I have no idea why, but that's like the only thing, but finally I took a shower, man. So yippee for that. And I had a good Saturday, honestly. And uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my overall experience from Gene Hack was really good. I had really had no problem. The hotel thing is away from the Dream Hack. That's not had nothing to do with them at all. So I'm not really gonna kind of put them together, I guess you could say. Uh, but yeah, I did. I I, I, I enjoyed Dream Hack a lot. I love the background. I love the environment. I love the scene, stuff like that. Um, I know people. I know artists that were kind of complaining about it because they didn't do they didn't do as many sales as they could. Or the house much they wanted um I, I i guess it's the market just did not like their art or something like that it, it got so bad that we we couldn't even talk about how many sales we were making within the event that's what the vendors told us even though they asked us how much how are we doing you know what i mean but in the group chat or anything like that we couldn't brag about it at all because they, they didn't want to make the other artists feel bad so i guess in some way i can understand that other than that um like i said i had a good experience i even it was so good actually i actually got paid to have a booth there if you think about it like like i said earlier we had to make dreamhack merch well at the end of the dreamhack merch if i didn't sell all of it i had like 20 stickers left of the dreamhack and they bought it off for me for five bucks each so i made like a hundred dollars from that so that took away the sixty dollars i'd invest in to make the merch plus the sales i got from the stickers i uh, like 40 stickers i sold or 35 stickers that i sold and that was really cool, honestly. What? <laughs> and also, I got paid for having a coloring book page at DreamHack because they made a coloring book at DreamHack. I'm telling you, I'm gonna say DreamHack. <laughs> and I got paid for that too, as well. So, I technically, I got paid to have a booth there. So, hell yeah, you know, I, I'm, I, I would love to be there next year too, as well. You know, I did very well there and I got paid to go there. So, hey, yippee. <laughs> I really say yippee. I'm so sorry about that. Anyway. That was pretty much it. I, I kind of want to break it down as fast as possible. Hope you guys enjoyed the behind the scenes stuff. And I know I talked about like other artists experience and stuff because I just want to put them out as like, not to like bash on GMAC, but to showcase like how, what they can do better for next year. Um, it's nothing extremely bad, bad, bad. For me, I had a fun, I had a great time. I had no problem. Um, I was just being me for the most part. And I always keep everything to myself and any frustrations, which I really didn't have any really. Um, there's only one con bad thing I had at DreamHack was we were right next to the the arena where they had like Rocket League and stuff like that. It got really loud with the music announcers and stuff like that. But other than that, I, it was pretty great, honestly. Um, oh, and also, I don't know who this is, who they were or something like that, or the convention or DreamHack, but game on them for scamming artists who had a oh know the art or their, their stuff for the exhibitors or whatever and they were charging 85 dollars in order to park at the behind of the venue that was really messed up i never heard of that ever happening it should always be for free especially just to unload stuff and so if you ever want to park there you have to pay 85 dollars every single day just to park there just to be at the back of the convention but if you just go under you pay 20 bucks like like where where i was at so shame on them whoever set that up like what the hell is wrong with you that's really messed up that is not cool it should always be free especially on the first day we have to unload your stuff because you're part of this show so shame on you on that whoever that is whether it's dreamhack or you know people you know the building kind of thing whatever uh, so shame on that for that but other than that i'll see you guys on the next one peace out much love hit the like subscribe i have more videos coming i got a lot of really cool ideas for you guys uh, not just vlog videos, but I got some really cool art challenges in a different way. Um, and also some uh, good topics coming out very, very soon, guys. All right. So thank you guys again. Much love. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Woo!